Welcome to Ephemera Files by Tommy. And I am going to start a short series. I'm going to try to make it as short and as quick a series as I can, showing you how I go about putting together a junk journal. Now this will be a little different because it is part of the challenge for July that, um, that Lindsay Zener has going on over at nevermorecreation17.com. And you can also find her on Facebook as uh, Lindsay Zenor, I think, and friends. Pretty sure it's Lindsay Zenor and friends. But if you look up Lindsay Zenor, you're probably going to find it. Um, one thing first, though, that I want to share because I'm kind of excited. On Saturday, I got my new glasses. And if you know me, looky there at the glitter. That is so me. They just make me really, really happy. So I wanted to share that with you. Under this, I have um, put together in a tub the things that I have gathered to begin making this journal. Normally, I have a tote like this where I just gather things as I find them. And I have a little note on the front about what the journal is for. And then when that is full, this one's ready. When that is full, I will go ahead and then gather up the washi tape, the binding thread, uh, different other things that I'm going to need to finish out the journal. And I have done that step in this tub right here. So here is the journal I am making for the July challenge. And I am making an altered book. And here's the book that I am using, and I've got it down in this, um, what is this? Is this like a chiffon bag or something like that? A uh, bundle of sari silk pieces that I purchased from Etsy came in that bag, and it, look, it's the perfect color. So I'm going to scoot this tub to the side, and as we go through it, um, I'll just be stacking things over here. That way you can kind of see in some semblance of order what I have put together. So here's the book. I saw this book and I fell in love with the cover, that photo right there and just the white debossing that is on the front. And then the cover here, you can tell that it's well used. Oops, that was a sneak peek at something you weren't supposed to get a sneak peek of yet. We took that in there. There we go. And it even has the owner's name, probably the first owner's name, Mrs. Emma S. Lethert of St. Paul, Minnesota. Now the cover's a little rough. I'm going to have to dismantle it and put it back together again. But this book was printed in, oh, 1906? 1905. It has copyright of 1877 by Daniel Holmes and then 1905 by Mary J. Holmes, who is the author. And I love this. It said, I dedicate this story of Mildred in memory of the many happy hours spent with her of the starry eyes and nut brown hair. And there are a few little places that have, like right here, are some roses and some different, just different little illustrations, not too many. But I am going to get this book. I did look it up and it's selling on eBay and Etsy for about $9. So I'm not going to worry about the cost of it. Let's see, I paid, ooh, I paid a dollar for it. That's pretty good. I paid a dollar for this book. So I will be getting that. And when it's finished, hopefully it'll still fit in the bag. I'm gonna set that to the side. Here is the digitals that I am going to use, mostly from Lindsay Zener's uh, July kits and some from my own kits. And I think that that is it. I don't think I used any other kits. But these papers, the colors are gorgeous. I love the green and the red and the, uh, the antique linen color. The green and red together 
are beautiful and they don't look Christmassy at all. I may not use that page since it's not got roses on it. Those are begonias and lilies. May not use that one, but I may. And then this is also from her kit. These, I think there's three pages of these little floral labels, floral tags. Yes. And then I printed some more of the pictures out smaller because I'm probably not going to use the balloons in this one, but I am going to fussy cut, fussy cut around the red and white roses. And then this is from Lindsay. This is from my digital kit. And like I said, almost all of them are Lindsay's whether from the Digital Kits for July or the Vintage Image Club or from the freebies that she posts on the Facebook group. So I think that all of these pages are just beautiful. She's designed them very well. And so we've got all of that. And I'm not going to be using all of these pages because I don't think that the journal would close if I did. Those are all on cardstock. These are on just plain printer paper. Ooh, plain sheet of paper got mixed in there. Don't know how that happened, but it happens. These digitals are from the same kit, but I went and altered them uh, with the water watercolor watercolor sponge artistic effects just to give it a little bit of a difference and then these are from my shop these are all digitals and you know it's only right to do a majority of it in Lindsay's even though she says to do it, she shouldn't have to because if it's her challenge, then she should get the credit. And then this is a postcard. I actually have the original vintage postcard, but I made a copy of it, and it goes very well with the kit. Next, I pull out some papers that I think will go. And some of them are small papers like this. Some are scrapbook papers. Once again, I may not use all of this or any of this. Who knows? We'll find out when we get to that point. I have some specialty paper here. This is flocked paper. And I have some different sheets of vellums. And then I have some mulberry papers and some onion skin papers. And then these are all hand dyed papers. And you can get you can get these. You can get digitals of some of these and you can get the originals from my shop. And I thought those colors all went very well. Next I get um I wouldn't call it clip art, but I would call it ephemera. Except I think I'm missing part of the ephemera. <laughs> Now it must just be a little uh, flatter than I thought. I have fussy cut these images from magazines. I snagged a free bridal magazine at an airport. And let me tell you, there's a whole lot of flowers in those magazines. And then these others are from gardening magazines and home decor magazines. This is from a catalog. This page, I'm not sure which part of it I'm going to use yet. We'll see. But right now it's all intact since I have not decided. Then we get to the fabrics and linens. And I have some doilies here. I believe this is going to go on the cover. Oops, if I hold it that way, you can't see it. Just like this. I think that it was a part of a collar because it seems to be its own piece. 
Pinky and then a doily and a doily. Here is some hand done cross stitch roses. And I, I don't know what it was used for because it is an intact piece and I'm not sure what its original purpose was. And then this scrap of lace fabric. This I cut off the outer side, outside of a large doily because I just wanted the inside for a project, but I didn't want to throw this away and waste it. Here's a piece of that uh, curtain that I got for 50 cents a package and I'm still using the pieces. I have some cheesecloth here and some mesh gauze. gauze. <laughs> I have this lovely hanky that I know I'm gonna use in there, even with the bright yellow, I'll make it work. And here I have some fabric scraps with roses. I have some upholstery samples. And I just pulled anything and everything that I thought might work. Even that blue I thought might work somewhere. And if it doesn't, no harm, no foul, I'll just put it back in my stash. And then here is going to be the, the supporting cast for the book cover. This is a little wider than the original book because I don't think that the original cover can handle all that stress. So I'm going to be, an attack, be attaching it to this and cutting this out. Highly recommend cereal boxes because if you cut this side off, you've automatically got your cover and it's already hinged and everything. Let's see. Next, I have my binding supplies that I'm going to use. I have this wine rose colored twine. I have my book binders tape and I have my um, poking platform, I guess, and my two needles that I use for binding. My awl is over in my Lazy Susan, so it's always accessible. I don't know if I'll use these flowers on the cover or not, but I decided to throw them in there. These are just little pink paper roses. Here I pulled out some ribbons and some laces. Now this doesn't mean that I can only use these. Obviously I can go to my drawer, to my basket, to wherever I happen to have my laces and trims, and I can put these back and I can pull others out. I can use all of them. I can use some of them. It really doesn't matter. It just helps me to get a head start on getting this put together. Then I have pulled out washies that I think will work well. And I pull out a bunch of washies and I rarely use all the washies that I pull out. Let's see, there should be another flat one. Oh, right there it is. So those are the washies that I'm going to consider using. I have my corner plates here because I know I'm going to need to strengthen those corners. I have a little cameo that kind of matches the cameo on the front. A little gold dangle that says hope. This is what's left of a cloisonne uh, bracelet that I had, and I think it'll go well in this journal. Little ribbon, little heart lock, and a heart that says handmade with love. And then here I have some beads that are little roses, and each of these has the sparkle in the center. I don't know if you can see that or not. I think you can. And then that doesn't belong in there. <laughs> so put these back in here. I will be going with a gold theme on my metal work. See next, I have the stamps 
and stencils that I had chosen to pull out. Once again, I may not use them all. I may use all of them. I may use none of them. But these are all roses. Not all the stamps are roses, but all of them have a rose on them, along with other things. This lace here matches something else I'm using. And some of them, it's the first time I'm actually using the stamp set. This is a CY... Mm. CY Cyan Yellow Magenta Black. So CYMB. There we go. Stamp. And you stamp it in layers. And I'll show you a tutorial on how I use that as we go through. And then here are the stencils that I chose. I am sticking with a lot of circles of different sizes. So I can make a very a variety of backgrounds. And then this little, um, what would that be called? A candelabra, a damask, I'm not sure. Royal damask, that's what it's called. So there we go, now you know. Along with my metal pieces that I showed you in that little bowl, I also have this red floral wire that I can use for wrapping beads and tassels and the like. And I have not pulled out any of my bead tubs because I don't know what I'm going to want yet, but I have that handy. I've pulled out my ink colors that I'm going to be working with. Once again, maybe not all of them because I don't know that I've ever used all of the inks that I have pulled out. But I am going to work with Victorian Velvet, Black Soot, Aged Mahogany, Candied Apple, Worn Lipstick, Old Paper, Wild Honey, Antique Linen, Gathered Twigs, and Bundled Sage. At least those are my first place choices. Scoot them to that side. Sorry about that squeak. Ooh. Here is the pen that I will be including with the kit because I have begun um, making a pen holder in the side inside the cover, front cover, and including a pen. I think it's just a nice little touch. I have this string of red tickets that are plain on the back, which is very helpful. And then here we come to the paper ephemera, which the tickets were a part of. Here I have a couple of postcards. They look vintage. They are not. They are kind of old because you can tell the aging on the edges, but they're not like vintage or antique. Here I have some bags and envelopes that I'll be working with. This is vellum with gold uh, embossing. And then these envelopes. This little black envelope. I don't know if that's a coin envelope or what. And then two glassine polka dotted and another envelope there. There are pieces in this package that I believe I got on Wish. And I really don't know how to figure out if that's where I got them from or not. But there are roses inside of here. There are old tags. There are garden tags. And there is... Uh, sheet music right there, so I'll probably be using some of that. Here I have an assortment of ephemera, little paper pieces. Some are Tim Holtz, some are uh, Paisley, Pink Paisley. Some, I have no clue where I got them from. Seriously, like these two. No idea where they came from. I will link whoever I can as I come across them. Now this is fun. This smells so good because it was a soap wrapper. And it had a pomegranate and fig bar of soap wrapped in it. And it still smells good. And that's been two weeks ago. So by the time whoever gets this um, receives it, it probably won't smell like that anymore, but it's still a beautiful color and the crinkle effect I just love. 
I have two acetate bags. And then I have a selection of napkins so that I can do some decoupage if I would like. This is the napkin that matched that uh, lace stamp that I pointed out earlier. And once again, I probably won't use all of these, but I like to have a selection of the napkins. Now, not everything fit in the tub. I also pulled out this wrapping paper. It looks old and it has roses on it. And I think it pulls the colors together beautifully. And so I will likely be using some of this in the journal. And then this, these are some rose petals that I dried last year and I've used them a couple of times. I still have all of these left. And for the most part, I don't know why this one's suddenly brown because I didn't have any brown ones in here, but for the most part, they retained their color. Oh, so beautifully. And so I will probably be incorporating them somewhere in the journal, not the little brown guy. And that will be my journal series that I'm going to start with uh, Lindsay Zener at nevermorecreations17.com. It is the July challenge and you can find all of the information on her website or on her Facebook page, and I will include a link to both of those below. I would like to thank you for joining me today. I hope you have a wonderful week, and remember, be kind, always. Bye.